Gentlemen, start your engines! As you sit, waiting on a starting grid, it's important to control your emotions. You save your adrenaline best you can, but every driver in the world knows it, and every driver in the world fails at it, because if your heart isn't pumping a little bit right now, sitting down in one of those race cars, in this unusual format, with all the gold waiting at the end of the day, well, I'm not sure you're alive, because you've got to be excited about the opportunity at hand for this one. So they're about to begin their roll. They'll go around twice, and then the green flag will drop. There's been a 100 lap or 150 miler run already today. They had only one engine failure, so the track has very little oil on it. That is down in the turn three area, but there's been a lot of rubber laid down. Now the question of a lot of rubber on the track, it's a brand new surface, and the heat factor, it could conceivably make it a bit slick. We'll see as the day wears on, but on the field now, waiting to go out and Warm it up for two laps, the best in NASCAR racing today. So now they move out behind the pace car. Two laps from now, we'll be racing. So let's take a look at the starting grid. On the pole with a new track record, 170.8, Bill Elliott, a T-Bird, steady and fast, this fellow. Outside, Tim Richmond coming back from a battle with pneumonia, an absolute charger. Row number two inside, young Davey Allison, daring two in a Ford 169 plus, Dale Earnhardt in a Chevy 169. He's at the peak of his game. Row number three, Jeff Bodine is inside. You have two different generations here. Benny Parsons, an old timer and a tough one outside in an old. Row number four, it's young Rusty Wallace in a Pontiac, and Neil Bonnet in a Pontiac will be on the outside. He's another tough charger. Row number five, Darrell Waltrip. You watch him work his way out of the pack. Bobby Hillen Jr. outside row five. He only lacks experience. Row number six, it's Greg Sachs. And outside will be Terry Labonte. Labonte may have the strongest engine in the field. Row number seven, veteran Harry Gant. And outside, Bobby Allison. You talk about a pair of old pros. You got them there. Row number eight, it's father and son. Kyle Petty and Richard Petty. When you say Petty, you're talking stock car racing, no question. Row number nine, Morgan Shepard inside. A pair of young ones here with Ricky Rudd outside. And inside row 10, Cale Yarborough carrying our race camera. Outside in row 10, number 88, Buddy Baker. He won the Winston Open earlier today. There's his car. And that put him in this field. And it's a field Buddy Baker should be in because he's one of the great names from his generation of racing. The last time he won a race at Charlotte was 1973. Earlier today, over 150 miles, he came away with 30,000 bucks. All right, Donnie Allison, his car's already gone at a good pace, 150 miles. Is this an advantage or disadvantage? Well, I think, Keith, uh, right now it's definitely an advantage. He has ran a race on this racetrack and knows what the tires are going to do, knows what the car is going to do. If anybody has an advantage, it has to be Buddy Baker right now. But he's back in the pack. Well, I, I, I think just like the driver said, that's really immaterial. You're going to run the car as hard as you can anyway and try to get to the front. And uh, he showed that in the uh, previous race. Yeah, he did. He had a heck of a duel, and he held off leg speed. All right, let's go inside Cale Yarborough's car, the veteran from Timmonsville, South Carolina. There's a race camera in there. Now, you can literally see Cale's eyes. I guess he's put glasses on now, but you'll also be able to see his feet and how he's handling his car. And you know this is a guy that does not like to run at the back of the pack. I mean, he's going to be crowding some tailpipes before this day is over if that automobile is <laughs> will hang together for him because Cale Yarborough doesn't understand running at the back of the back unless he's helpless to change it. Let's see if the pace car comes down off. It's off the racetrack. The green flag is up and here comes 20 of the best in NASCAR stock car racing, the Winston. What's the first corner? Bill Elliott sitting on the pole has the position just right there with him. They could not blow Elliott off. The Thunderbird takes the lead authoritatively and coming down off turn number two and heading up the back straight, Bill Elliott has the lead. And he may be the one of the guys out there who will try to go all the way in front. 
Remember, however, you've got to up. Dale Earnhardt almost got on the wall. You had another car get loose. It was Earnhardt who almost tipped the wall, and Jeff Bodine's rear end was floating all over the racetrack. Well, what really happened then, Bodine got down in the tree a little hard, Keith, and did slide up into uh, Dale Earnhardt. But both drivers are able to control it, but it was expensive to both of them as they dropped well back off the pace of the leader, Bill Elliott, who is stretching it out right now. They must make, under the green flag, one pit stop under green and take on two tires. And it's going to be interesting to see the theory and philosophy of who might stop first or who will continue to run through 60 or more laps. But right now, the question is whether or not anybody can run down Bill Elliott because he is just flying. The car seems to be working extremely well, Keith, in both corners, and he is just stretching the distance out. All right, let's take a look at what happened as we take another look at it and watch what happens up here coming into turn four. That's the tricky portion of this racetrack. There's been more trouble in turn four than any place else on this racetrack. And you can see Earnhardt going right up against the wall as he and Bodine tipped a little bit, but he fought it off and held his car and is still running and undamaged. So it is Bill Elliott running out in front and we're going to take a look. You see that's 27. That's Rusty Wallace in the Pontiac, qualified at better than 168 miles an hour. And he moved for a moment into second place, taking it away from Tim Richmond. Richmond is third. Neil Bonnet running in car number 75 is now in that number four position. But look at Elliott stretch it out. Really, Keith, it surprises me that, he, that he's able to do that this early. It's combination, Keith. They've got the right combination going for them right now in this segment, and uh, we'll see what happens. There was another thing about tires and uh, a racetrack that's sticky, a racetrack that could get a little slick as the day goes on. When you change tires, even though they are identical tires, there is no certainty you are going to get the same feel or the same adhesion when you come back out. That's why some of us thought that some of these people might take the early pit stop so that late in this 75 lapper, the first segment, they would have seasoned tires to make that final sprint. Well, that's true, Keith. What will happen is uh, you can't really tell the tire size after they run a while. You know, you got to measure once you take them off, and you might put a tire on that's way out of kilter, and it just takes the handling of the race car right away from you. Bill Elliott stretching his lead on every lap. Uh, an interview recorded earlier, Bill had this comment about the basic character of the Charlotte Motor Speedway. What kind of a track is it? Charlotte takes the combination. You gotta have engine, you gotta have car, you gotta have driver. You gotta have everybody working together. Plus you gotta, you know, as far as Sunday goes, you gotta have the crew to get you in and out of the pits, you know, for the first segment of the race anyway. Pre-recorded comments of Bill Elliott. Dale Earnhardt, incidentally, who has won six races in nine starts this year, in that little shunt or a little moment up there in the fourth turn, he dropped from number four spot all the way back to 10th spot, and he has not been able to improve himself. And right now, there's a pretty good sized gap uh, between uh, eight and seven. Earnhardt has moved himself up a couple of spots, but he's, uh, he's pretty well back right now of Bodine, who is running in the number position. But your runaway leader right now in the first segment of 75 laps in the Winston is Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott is dusting them off after 10 laps in the 75 lap first segment of the Winston with $600,000 total prize money. Back in the pack, however, there's uh, some interest going on. Rusty Wallace holding on to second place. Tim Mitch Richmond is running third. Neil Bonnet is a distant fourth and being crowded now by Davey Allison. But Davey Allison now just fell off the pace a bit and lost a couple of spots himself as Darrell Waldrop has made a bold move. He has come now from the ninth position and he is running fifth. So Darrell Waldrop has worked his way from nine to five. And he'll, he's a grinder. He'll hang in there and grind and grind and grind. But right now, the way Bill Elliott's running, and then you've got the following cars of Wallace and Richmond, and then everybody else is way back there. 
Yeah, and really losing ground, Keith. Uh, Earnhardt is having an awful problem in one and two, like his car is pushing or something. And, uh, you know, he got taken back in that first uh, first lap melee, and he just hadn't overcome that yet. Donnie Allison is with us. Dr. Jerry Punch is standing by along pit road, and so far no one has shown any inclination to duck in early and uh, pick up uh, an early pit stop. But you've got to make one, remember, under green. Up oh, here we got a car. It's Greg Sachs, number 50, heading down pit road. So there's a car coming in early. He may have something wrong. It may be their strategy for him to do that. But Bill Elliott now way, way out in front, running in second place, Rusty Wallace, followed by Tim Richmond. Then it's Jeff Bodine and Daryl Waldrop. Dale Earnhardt now creeping past three cars and has moved up in right behind uh, Daryl Waldrop. Let's find out about how things are going with the Elliott car. Obviously pretty well. Here's Jerry Punt. Well, they're all smiles in the Elliott pit, and this is Ernie Elliott, Bill Elliott's older brother and crew chief. And Ernie, are you you got to be a little bit surprised about how quickly Bill went out front and the cars are sort of left in his wake. Are you pleased with the way the car's running so far? Yeah, the car's really running good. You know, I'm really surprised that everybody else is not running. You know, but since this race is in three segments, it's an awful long race. It, it's, it, it's nothing to really be concerned about now. They don't even feel they're using all the car right now, and that's maybe a bad omen for the rest of the field because Bill Elliott really isn't putting the entire pedal in it, so that may be something to think about later on in the day. All right, Jerry, thank you. Incidentally, Greg Sachs pit time, 15.1 seconds. He picked up his two tires. He picked up a splash of fuel and was gone. That's a good pit stop for him, Donnie Allison. Yeah, it was, but uh, he did lose a lot of time coming in, uh, Keith. I don't know what was his problem, but he did lose a lot of time getting into the pit. Yeah, you got to come blowing down that road in a hurry, and uh, he came off uh, at a relatively low speed, and his pit's located at the other end, so he, he coasted along for quite a ways. There's your running order now as uh, we are working lap 16, and Bill Elliott's increasing his lead. I mean, he's just blowing them off. About three and a half seconds between first and second at lap 16. Right now, it's uh, Tim Richmond hanging on to the coattail, or tailpipe if you like, whatever you want to call it, of Rusty Wallace. And I thought it was a bit of a bold move by young Rusty Wallace early on in the race as he blew by three cars and jumped right into the thick of things and now has settled into what seems to be a comfortable second place. You got a, a, a mixture here, Donnie Allison, of the old warriors and, and the newcomers, and. Uh, the young'uns are hanging in there pretty well, aren't they? They sure are. And if you notice on the side of Darrell Walton's car, there's a great big tire mark already. And uh, you know, I'm sure that came from that first lap uh, uh, scrape up there in turn three and four. But uh, they've been running pretty close. And uh, Neil Bonnet just got under uh, Dale Earnhardt coming off too. I tell you, it could have been, you could have taken out a half a dozen cars in that if it hadn't been skilled men handling it because uh, they were all so much, so tightly together that Bodine, Earnhardt, Bonnet, uh, and two or three others could very well have, have gone. You Tim Richmond remains an interesting story, though. Tim came down with Rocky Ligonia and really had a hard time after the Riverside event last year. And, of course, that's a question about how well he'll be able to run today. So we put the question to him as to what his conditioning program has been. Well, mainly the diet consisted of, of everything I could get my hands on. Uh, right now, I'm at uh, a slight heavier 176 or 77 than I would like to be, and I was down to 148, uh, which for me, that's, I mean, that's like a toothpick, I think. Uh, and basically, even up to this point, there's been recently walking, swimming, some tennis, um, laying real close to the water, and doing my neck exercises <laughs> the beach on the beach <laughs> but uh, other than that uh, I haven't had enough strength to really go out and do any weight training or anything like that uh, it's just been one of a very gradual uh, you know, process of, of training um, plus it's you know I've, I've been very timid to take what I could have been too big a step that might have put me back into the condition I was in December. So I've been very timid as far as what I do to, to, to get back into shape.
for fear of going back the other way, for fear of, uh, you know, just going backwards instead of forwards. Right now, Tim Richmond is running third in the Winston behind Rusty Wallace. The runaway leader right now in the T-Bird is Bill Elliott, who won the Daytona 500 earlier this year after having that incredible season a year ago. I mean, uh, a million dollar season is becoming sort of commonplace with this Elliott bunch from Dawsonville, Georgia. Keith, see that it's an enormous lead. Yes, Donnie. Keith, he's beating him about two mile an hour per lap. Uh, you know, and I, I never dreamed this would happen uh, in a race with this many good cars that somebody would be able to dominate that, that much. And one of the factors in the race, remember this, is the assumption of the lead. Now, he's got to make a pit stop, and I really don't understand. The only way I can see that Bill Elliott could go wire to wire, including the mandatory pit stop, if he got lucky. If he came down, committed himself to the pit stop, and headed for pit road on commitment, and then he lucked out and got a yellow, then conceivably he could be a wire to wire winner. Otherwise, I don't see how you could lead it wire to wire. And right now, running in second place, but my goodness, almost a full straightaway behind him is Rusty Wallace, followed closely by Tim Richmond. Cale Yarborough is way behind the crowd now. You see that Cale qualified at just over 164 miles an hour, so his equipment right now is really not competitive with the rest of the field. Uh, but that's one of the rigors of becoming a car owner because he has, like Buddy Baker, become a car owner. But let's watch through our race cam now and, and get a feel of what it's like to run this racetrack and from a man who has had good times and bad times on the Charlotte Motor Speedway, Donnie Ellison. Well, Keith, we're coming out uh, onto the front straightaway now, which you know is not a straightaway. It's like a trioval. It's got two little bends in it. And then number one corner and number two corner are completely different than three and four. And uh, uh, you have a tendency to get into this corner a little bit too hard sometimes and uh, make the car get out of the bottom lane. But the ideal place is to stay in the bottom. Down the back straightaway, Coming to turn three, you know, it's basically the same thing. You want to keep the car right in the bottom of the racetrack. Well, see right there, Keel's car moves up about a half a width or three quarters of a car width, and that's not ideal. And that's the reason why Keel is not running well right now. All right, he's passing in front of the main grandstand, heading into turn number one. Let's tilt the camera down a bit here and look at what he's doing with his feet. You use the brakes a lot on this racetrack, don't you? Well, Keith, really, uh, you don't use the brakes very hard at all. You do use them a little bit, and it is it is hard on a driver that drives with his right foot. I use my left foot on the brake, so I don't have to transfer my foot from, from side to side. But uh, you don't use the brakes very hard, but it is time-consuming to take your foot off the gas. If you watch going into turn one, now you'll see there he is. He's in the brakes. Now he's back in the gas, and uh, that's very time-consuming here. All right, now... When he's doing that, though, he's really not feathering it, is he? He's not easing it in there. He's, he's, when you take your foot off of there, you, you lose that feathering effect. Right, and these particular type cars, Keith, uh, really feel better with your foot on the gas. But like I said, you do have to take your foot off when you are a right foot breaker. Well, I don't usually get all the way out of the gas when I drive the car with my right foot on the gas and left foot on the brake. Of course, maybe some people can't brake with the left foot. I can't. <laughs> so. Maybe it's one of those little things that uh, Kale has never quite mastered. But nonetheless, he's well back in the field right now. The running order up front, as you see, Bill Elliott will way out in front. We'll be back after this commercial and a word from our local stations. Bill Elliott, awesome Bill, continues to smoke him. He's running about five seconds ahead now of the second place car, Rusty Wallace, and he's lapped a couple of cars, including Greg Sachs. It turns out that Greg Sachs' pit stop was not strategic at all. It was a necessity. Let's get the story from Dr. Jerry Punch. Indeed it was, Keith. It was an unscheduled pit stop. Now, the requirements for this race are one pit stop. You've got to make one green flag pit stop and change at least two tires. You can put three or four. You can put one in the trunk if you want to, but you've got to change at least two tires. The Greg Sachs pit stop was a necessity. You look here. This is the right rear tire off Sachs' car. It has a hole in it. The tire was going flat. Sachs was losing control of the car. They had to come in. They have now made their green flag stop a lot earlier than they wanted to make it, but it's already been made. As far as the other leaders are concerned, well, 
The consensus down here is that possibly Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt, and many others will make their stop in and around lap 60. Maybe lap 58, maybe lap 62, but around lap 60, most of the leaders should be making their scheduled green flag stop. Jerry, can I ask you, did Greg Sachs take on fuel so that he can run the rest of the race? Uh, yes, he did, Keith. He took on two tires and a full can of fuel, so he should be okay. And they probably would like to have a caution to make sure, because he came in very, very early, but they probably could stretch it and go the full 75 laps. All right, we've got Davey Allison headed right at you now, car number 28. Let's see whether or not that's planned or whether it's uh, considered a necessity. Gas is going in his car and two tires on the right side. This, of course, the son of Bobby Allison, the nephew of Donnie. You know him well, Donnie. You're high on him. I sure do, Keith, and uh, the kid is doing a real fine job, and so is his pit crew. If you notice, he just left pit road. Yes, he did. He's in and out in a hurry. He's loaded with fuel. He's got four tires. His time in the pits for Davey Allison, 13.7 seconds. Let's talk about tires and this racetrack now as we continue to watch him run an Elliott lead. Sometimes, sometimes when you put fresh tires on, you haven't got the same factoring. You don't have the same feel of the car. But eventually, as you wear those tires and grind them down, you'll get that feel back. You'll get more stick. Well, what really happens, Keith, uh, staggering gets off, and uh, it takes the heat to get a back ride, and uh, sometimes you don't hit it. Sometimes you're unlucky and don't hit it, but usually you do hit it, and you know what you're looking for, and uh, uh, it works out. You're looking at second, third, and fourth, the yellow car up in front, running in second place. Jeff Bodine, Tim Richmond, and Rusty Wallace now has dropped from second back to fourth. So Wallace has uh, given up position on the racetrack. In the meantime, Daryl Waltrip continues to grind away, and so does Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt now is tucked in behind Waltrip and would be running in number six position. I guess, not in the basic uh, attitude uh, Based on what I'm seeing here, one is Elliott's cars right now. The combination is so much faster than anybody else. Uh, the feeling is that I'm going to go, like you said, I'm going to go out there and let it rip and take my chances and, uh, and see what happens. Well, I think right now, uh, Keith, he's not worried all about assuming the lead. He wants to get this 75 lap done, and his car shows right now that he's strong enough. It doesn't make any difference where he starts in the second segment. And... Uh, you know, I think assuming the lead, uh, that was a little bit, uh, a little bit far-fetched. I don't think that anybody's really worried about that. They feel like if their car's good enough, they're going to win the race anyway. Well, the intent and the planning and development of this particular format, and it was done uh, much at the hand, under the hand of Les Richter, who is now the vice president of uh, competition and development for NASCAR. Of course, all of many of you may remember Les as an All-American, All-Pro linebacker and used to run the Riverside International Raceway for many years. He's now with NASCAR, living in Florida. And what they were trying to do, they kept emphasizing, we're trying to force out into the open the most aggressive race driver in NASCAR competition. And at this particular point, the format has not done that. Well, I really think it has, Keith. Uh, the most aggressive right now is Bill Elliott, because he's driving away and leaving them. And, uh, you know, that's that's our sport. That's what we're supposed to do. Uh, you know, like I said in the, in the opening, uh, in 27 years, I never gave the lead up willfully. But when you got a guy sitting out there 300 yards in front of everybody else, or ain't more than that now, it's a full straightaway lead that Elliott has over Bodine. Uh, there is no chance for somebody else back in the pack to, uh, to be aggressive. There's no chance for them to get a shot at the lead until such time. Uh, Bill Elliott decides to take the pit stop. Now, there's the difference between first and second place. It's enormous. Eight and a half seconds. That's on lap 42. Let's go to the Davy Allison pit now. Dr. Jerry Punch. If you came in and pitted about 20 laps before you had planned to, why the early pit stop? Well, we were going backwards, and uh, Davy needed a little bit of help. So, uh, you know, this is a strategy game. We were... Uh, a little bit loose all the way around the racetrack. You know, and you got to make a scheduled stop anyway, so I just wanted to be the first in line. And we're running pretty good right now. Hopefully, we'll be right there with them when they pit. Have you turned him loose now, told him to go ahead and put the pedal down and try to catch him? Yep. We're going to give it all we got here with this Texaco Haviland, Floyd Thunderbird. He's doing a real good job for us. We're communicating real well, and we really got a good chance to win these other two races also. 
one of the youngest crew chiefs in the Winston Cup Tour, 25-year-old Joey Knuckles, carried this car to victory lane in Talladega a couple weeks ago with young Davy Allison aboard. Right now, young Davy Allison just gets, got passed by his daddy, Bobby Allison, going into turn number three. And of course, they had quite a weekend over in Talladega, if you remember, where Bobby had that horrendous crash. His car was retained by the wire screen and even though the wire screen held the car, there were some in the crowd who suffered injuries, and Davy Allison went on to win at Talladega. So that's becoming quite a story, father and son. And of course, you have the Petties, Richard and Kyle, also father and son racing out on the track right now. You're looking at the leaders and the pursuers, and we'll be back. We're in lap 48 of segment one, one of three in the Winston. Total prize money, 600,000. First place in the finale, 10 lapper, guaranteed 200,000. Here's your second five. Waltrip hanging in in number six position. Bobby Allison now moved up to number eight. Betty Parsons hanging in there at nine and Harry Gant running in the number 10 position. Next Sunday, ABC Sports goes to Indy for the nation's largest single-day sporting event. You'll see live network coverage start to finish for only the second time in Indy 500 history. The action begins at 11 Eastern time, 11 in the morning, 10 Central and 8 o'clock out on the Pacific Coast here on ABC Sports. This may well be the most docile of the three segments. The next segment, after a 10-minute break, will be 50 laps. 50 laps, that's 75 miles, and then comes that 10-lap finale. You would think there will be some rattling around, possibly in late in that 50-lapper, but surely in the 10-lapper. So we put the question to Jeff Bodine. Do you always keep your cool when somebody has rattled your gas tank? Well, it's always very hard to control your emotions, your temper if you have one keep your cool uh, just under normal racing conditions uh, but that's that's a very important part of this sport now is, is to maintain a level head to realize what your object objectives are and, and go through and follow through and, and do that during a race it's very easy to get too racy out there especially in a 600 mile race uh, uh, this format of the Winston is shorter segments uh, it's more of a sprint race so maybe we can attack this race a little differently, attack our competition a little differently, but oh yeah, you get bumped, uh, you want to retaliate, you want to bump the guy back, uh, but you have to remember, boy, you know, if I do, I might wreck. If I, I might cut a tire, I might put a fender on a tire. So you really have to try to remain cool and just do the best you can under any circumstance, if it's rough or if it isn't rough. When you're going 165, 170 miles an hour on a mile and a half racetrack, uh, here's Bobby Allison now on pit road. Jeff Bodine running in second place. That's why experience is such a factor. When you're going at these speeds, a lot of it has to be instinctive. Now let's watch the Allison pit stop. See how Bobby makes out. He's taking his two tires. He's taking fuel. They had some now kind of they had some kind of mess up, uh, Keith. There was nobody at the right rear tire. I don't know whether the gun messed up or what, but that's very costly. Long time in there. Where's Elliot? He's not going to drop a lap. Now Benny Parsons is coming down pit road. There's Elliot coming in. The leader is on pit road, headed for his stop at lap 55. So Bobby Allison had a poor pit stop. Allison in the pits for 22.1 seconds. Dale Earnhardt is in. They're all coming now. Elliott in and out and gone. 12.2 seconds. That's an outstanding stop for the leader, Bill Elliott. Bodine has taken the lead, so that's an assumption of the lead for Bodine. But Bodine has now got to come back into the pits. So after all the pit stops are made, then we will find out who is where and what their possibilities are. But they all took off and they all ran past 50 laps uh, unless there was a reason for them coming in. And uh, Richmond overshot his pit just a little bit. 
but uh, he's getting tires and fuel now, and it's a pretty good stop for him. And hurrying down pit road is Terry Labonte, sliding, 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 and finally stopping. Didn't quite get into his pits because as Richmond was coming out, Labonte was coming in, and it had to be a heads-up move by both of them. Harry Gant has also made his pit stop, and Rusty Wallace is in, and so is Cale Yarborough. The leader out on the racetrack right now is Jeff Bodine. Richard Petty is coming in. And Bodine has got to be thinking about coming in pretty quickly himself. Buddy Baker is also on pit road for his stop. So there will be some shuffling of positions now as they come in for their tires. Bodine gives up the lead and comes down pit road. All of this going on between laps 54 and 60. Right now, they're on 58. Elliott went in and out in 12.2 seconds. Bodine's taken on four tires, Donnie. No, he's not. He, he, uh, he changed inside. the left side. He's put the inside tire. Why right. did he do that? I don't have any idea. I also saw Earnhardt do that. Right now, Kyle Petty is the leader on the track, car number 21. The younger Petty. But he's got to come to the pits, too. A question on the, in the Bodine pit as to why left side tires very much. Bodine. And Gary Nelson standing with me, the crew chief for Jeff Bodine. And Gary, you took left side tires on instead of right. Why that? Uh, basically, because we can change lefts quicker than we can right. Uh, tire wear doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, just a little ways to the finish. We want to try and lead a couple laps after the leader pitted because that helps you in the starting position later. Left sides get you out quicker, so we should be able to finish second now. What is Jeff saying about the track itself, the track condition? Started off uh, a little bit on the loose side, and it got pretty good. We'll talk a little more when the, the race is over, and we'll make a decision on what to do to beat that Ford. That's Gary Nelson, the crew chief for Jeff Bodine. Kyle Petty has ducked in and out of the pits. Good, pretty good stop. 13 seconds for him. And Bill Elliott is back into the lead. And he's been out there most of the day, having given it up. You see he's running right there behind Bobby Allison. So Bill Elliott in that T-Bird is just really flying today as we pass lap 60. The top five, Elliott, Wallace, Earnhardt, Waldrip, and Richmond. You see Waldrip now has moved up to the number four position. Earnhardt, who has won six of nine so far this year, got into a little shot early on in the race and turned four where he and Bodine nipped, and Earnhardt almost went into the wall, and uh, he has never really recovered from it. I think he's recovered a little bit from it now, Keith. He is uh, on the move, and uh, I don't know whether it's a strategy or not. It's not like Dale Earnhardt to run back there, though. No, it isn't. Of course, he dropped from fourth to tenth. So right, he went a long ways back, and he's gained some of his back. Right now, Earnhardt has moved past Waltrip. And the leader is Bill Elliott. Like I said, this figured to be the most docile of the three segments. The next one will be for 50 laps after a 10 minute break. Now you can do anything you want during that 10 minutes in repairing the car or changing the car. If you're good enough, you can change an engine, I suppose, but there's no way in the world that, that any of us believe anybody can change an engine in 10 minutes. Got a car spinning. Neil Bonnet, Richard Petty. Bonnet in turn three and four, between three and four. Petty, Bonnet and Petty get tangled up. Richard Petty, Bonnet hits the wall, comes to rest inside. Petty is able to continue and is making his way down pit road. So two gone. The first real shot of the day, Richard Petty there, damaged severely as you see, probably headed undoubtedly for the garage. And Neil Bonnet, who crashed into the wall, spun around, didn't seem to hit the wall all that hard, but nonetheless probably is finished for the day. So you've got two gone. Richard Petty heading straight for the garage. Ripped up pretty hard on that right front. And so the field is now reduced to 18. And the leader is Bill Elliott. Last year, Richard had a severe accident 
up there in turn number four one of the toughest of his career and it brings out obviously a yellow flag and the field slows down well this goes back to the old pun Donnie about Monsieur Debris showing up and in NASCAR racing when that yellow flag comes out and the pace car is out on the lap everybody closes up right Keith and it surprises me that more cars uh, Davy Allison came in the pits but I haven't seen anybody else come in the pits well now here comes uh, Benny Parsons but uh, you know we have well, Davy, for the second time, taking a pair of right side tires. And they go whipping around. Looks like they're going to put on four tires. They're going to put all four on, right. So they're under yellow, so it's a good time to do it. Yellow flag laps do count here in the first two segments. But when you get down to the end of the day in that 10 lap finale, all of the counting laps have to be run under green. Neil Bonnet's car there being picked up. And Neil is still in the car, and you see the ambulance there. The stretcher is out with the medical people, and we're waiting to see as to what his condition might be because I did not see Neil Bonnet get out of the car after he hit the wall. It did not seem he hit it very, very hard, though he did spin into it. And when you're going 160 miles an hour, obviously you're going to hit it hard. But, I mean, relatively speaking, with the way these cars are constructed, oftentimes a man will walk away from a shunt like that, but so far, uh, Neil Bonnet has not walked away from it. Keith, he hit it pretty hard. You see that big black mark over there up in the wall. It, he did hit the wall pretty hard. I guess it's, uh, you got 10 laps to go as we pass 65. I guess it has to do, too, with the, uh, with the angle that you hit it, doesn't it? Very definitely, very definitely. The angle that is critical. and. Uh, you know, he could have got a bruised shoulder or something like that. And Well, you had a tough one here yourself. About in that same place, too. Yeah. All right. Uh, you got two cars out, and we're still waiting to get some word uh, relative to the condition of Dale Earnhardt, who, uh, not Dale Earnhardt, but uh, Neil Bonnet, who did not climb out of the car himself. And there's a cluster of medical people around that car right now. When the uh, accident happened, Bill Elliott had gone back into the lead. Richard Petty was involved in the accident with Bonnet, and right now, Dr. Jerry Punch is with him. First of all, Richard, are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. What happened up there? Uh, the 50 uh, blew an engine. Uh, you know, I was racing with a 33 car, and the uh, 33 went under him, and, and the 50 was on the outside, and just as we started in the corner, he blew an engine, and I went low, and then he come low, and I didn't get quite enough on the outside of him, and I just clipped him enough to turn my car. Well, this car can't be good luck for you. This is the one they repaired in Daytona a couple of years ago when you hit your shoulder and dislocated. I think I took this car out and put it somewhere and hide it. Well, I, th I think after it's beat up good enough today, I imagine they won't mess with it. We'll go home and get another for the 600. Well, better luck to you on the 600. Richard Petty's car pretty heavily damaged as we would uh, the front of the car completely sheared away as the Petty car. Let's take a look at the front of the car. You see the front of the car where it came into contact up there. Sheet metal pulled away. The tire shoved back in. Complete front end damage. Part of the frame is bent. Looks like this car may be through forever as a race car. All right, Jerry, it was Neil Bonnet in car number 75, not to Greg Sachs in car number 50. They are painted identically. They look just alike, and I'm sure that Richard looked up in, this, in, in the shock of the moment and saw that coloring and assumed it was 50, but it was not. It was Neil Bonnet who dropped the engine, dropped the oil, set the whole thing in motion. And Bonnet has now been put into an ambulance and apparently is going off to the hospital. We cannot at this moment give you an indication of exactly what the problem might be with him, but his automobile is under tow now, headed for the garage and out of the race. And there are 18 automobiles out on the track. The oil dry has been put down now, and the yellow is still out and perhaps will be for some time. Next Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports features a live world championship rematch. Light heavyweight champion Marvin Johnson defeated Leslie Stewart to get the crown. Now it's the rematch to give Stewart his chance to avenge his only pro loss and win back the title. Plus a live Indianapolis 500 report and Wide World's Athlete of the Week award Saturday at 4.30 Eastern and Pacific, 3.30 Central here on ABC Sports. Now they have closed back. Is there any reason, Donnie Allison, to think that perhaps there is someone back two or three or four positions that could now take a run at Bill Elliott? 
I, I just don't think so right now, Keith. That, uh, I know that Bodine was running awful good before the pit stops, and so was Darrell Walter. And, uh, you know, they're second and third right now, so we'll see what happens. But Bill Elliott was awful strong. All right, it's Elliott, Bodine, Waltrip is now third. Earnhardt is now four. And Earnhardt has been in practice all week, running faster than anybody else through the middle of the turns, followed by number five, Rusty Wallace. There's Dale Earnhardt right now. And uh, he's been on a bit of a roll this year, having won six out of nine races and pocketed a whole bunch of money. Well, I'll tell you, Keith, in uh, practice yesterday afternoon, he by far looked like the best car. And, uh, you know, I'm surprised. I don't know whether he got a little damage up in the corner there when the race first started or what, but I'm surprised that his car is not a little better than it is right now. The field working its way down from the top toward the bottom, which is thinning out and dissipating the oil dry and dissipating the oil that was dropped on the racetrack by the blown engine of Neil Bonnet. And the yellow continues, and I'm sure we're going to get at least one, maybe two more yellow flag laps. The yellow flag laps do count here in the first segment. The only place in today's competition where the yellow flag laps do not count will be in your 10 lap finale. And right now, the way things have developed, you've got to put your finger right on uh, car number nine, Bill Elliott, when it comes down to uh, an all out shootout in a 10 lapper. There's your first five running order. And your second five, Richmond, Rudd, Kent, Petty, Kyle Petty, and Benny Parsons, uh, Richard Petty, obviously out of the race. The lead assumptions, uh, let's see, you had uh, you had Kyle Petty in the lead one time. You had uh, Bill Elliott in the lead two times. So as far as lead assumptions right now, Bodine one time. So right now, Bill Elliott is sitting in the catbird seat. He seems to have the strongest, fastest automobile on the track. He has two lead assumptions. And right now, there's very little reason not to think that he's not going to be the pole sitter for the second segment as we come up on 70 laps. One of the things, if you ever go to a, a NASCAR race and you want to know when you got one lap to go, watch the man, the flag man, out of the start finish line. If he rolls up that yellow flag and holds it up like a stick, that means one more yellow lap and then you go. Right, Keith, and they turn the caution light out when they do that. As long as the caution light's on on the, on the caution car, you're not going to get a start. turned the lights off now and so everybody all the way down the line can uh, look and see the yellow lights on the racetrack however they continue to blink but every driver out there knows well when that blinking light on the top of the pace car goes out next time around we're going to drop the hammer Buddy Baker is sitting right alongside of Bill Elliott Baker is inside there in the blue and white car Elliott is topside in the red car and it'll be Bodine's right behind Elliott. And you see Waltrip there in the orange looking car. He's wiggling around right behind Bodine. So it'll be interesting to see because you know full well when that green comes, Buddy Baker's going to stick his foot all the way to the carburetor. He's right, a lap down, but he can get in the way. Yeah, see, all the, all the cars on the inside line are lap down. It really makes it critical getting turn one, especially with a car that runs as good as Buddy's does. Uh, he'll carry Elliott in a little bit too hard and uh, it could get very hairy in turn one. At the end of this, you'll have four laps to go, uh, I do you believe. We'll be completing lap number 71 right here. The pace car is out of the way now and down pit road. And here they come, and Elliott just rockets into the lead. I think Waltrip was pushing Bodine. Looked to me like he had his bumper very right definitely, on him. Very definitely was pushing Keith. And now Bodine, a little bit slow for the acceleration, is now going down the back straight and has uh, Bill Elliott in his sights, closing in on him. Bodine is in the gold and white car right behind the leader Elliott. The Waltrip is now running third. Dale Earnhardt is now running four. Rusty Wallace is five. Let's watch Earnhardt for a moment as you look back here. Now watch Earnhardt in that yellow and blue car. See if he can run those turns a little faster. See him close up in the middle. Now can he hold on? He picked up some in the middle of the turn, but he can't gain on the straightaway.
Again, he's going to close a little bit in the middle of that turn. But Bodine right now is tucked right in behind Bill Elliott, Daryl Waltrip behind him, and Earnhardt. Two laps to go. Bodine is hanging on tenaciously. Elliott was so dominant and was rocketing off into the lead, but Bodine got a gentle nudge from Waltrip coming down the front straight and closed Bodine right in behind him. So the issue is not resolved. White flag, one to go. Elliott's got Bodine on his hip. Waltrip doesn't seem to have the sock. The only man who will have a shot at Elliott is Bodine. Elliott has two leads. Bodine one. Elliott stretches it a bit on the back straight, working three. Bodine closes in the middle. Earnhardt has dropped back. It's going to be Bill Elliott streaking to win segment number one. Bodine second. Waltrip third. Earnhardt four. Wallace five. Richmond six. And it's a photo for seven. Well, you know, if we go back to the pit stop, Keith, uh, uh, the guy that really put on the show at the end put on left side tires, not right side tires. That was... That was Bodine. Interesting little move, wasn't it? They went for the left side. All right, let's go back to that uh, restart after the yellow and try to watch it very carefully, and we'll see if we can use our telestrator here to show you. We're literally, Darrell Waltrip is gonna put his bumper, put his bumper on uh, right there, right there. Little bit, <laughs> I'm in trouble with this thing. Right there, you'll see that in that group, Waltrip in the gold car right here, literally put his bumper on Bodine and gave him a nudge when it looked like Elliott was gonna take off and run away from everybody. He got a nudge there, right there. And all of a sudden he hooked on to uh, Bill Elliott and hung on to him, but he didn't meet him. And Elliott comes streaking across. So Bill Elliott will be your pole sitter for segment number two, which will be run over a distance of 50 laps on this mile and a half speedway. $25,000 bonus goes to Bill Elliott for winning segment one. There's the clock. You've got 7.20 left in their 10-minute break. There was one wreck. It took out Neil Bonnet, blown engine. He got in the, a shunt with uh, Richard Petty. It took them both out of the race. We are now going to confirm the condition of Neil Bonnet with Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Bob Rahilly, the car owner for Neil Bonnet, has been inside, and they have talked to Neil, and it's good news we have that Neil's awake and alert. I understand they're going to take him in for some other x-rays? Uh, yeah, he said he's all right, but they're just going to take him in for precautionary reasons. They always they do a real good job of making sure those guys are really okay when they say they are. Well, the word we have here, they're going to x-ray his neck, his right elbow, and his right knee. Otherwise, he should be okay, and that's good news for all the family and friends and fans of Neil Bonnet. Unless something happens to uh, Bill Elliott, Earnhardt, and Bodine, uh, and even Wallace, I don't think. Maybe Wallace he could get, but uh, I don't believe he can run down uh, those front three. And the front three now beginning to string out pretty good. You see car 28 closing in behind the pack there, but the most damaging factor in, in so far as Davey Allison's uh, posture is concerned is the simple fact that he's a lap down to the leader. Racetrack doesn't seem to be slick, Donnie. No, it doesn't, and uh, I just timed Elliott the last lap, and he ran over 167 mile an hour, and that's really fast when he was running in the first segment. Which may mean uh, that the other people have picked up some, too. In particular, I would say Earnhardt, but again, you've got to go back in that first segment and remember Earnhardt was in fourth spot and got involved with the ruckus up there and dropped all the way back to 10th never totally recovered from it insofar as the leader was concerned, even though they had a yellow and the field was able to close up. Bobby Allison has not been much of a factor so far in today's race either. His car really is not working good at all, uh, Keith. I don't know what their problem is. He ran awful good yesterday in practice, but it's not showing it today. 
Cale Yarborough hanging in there and running. Well, his car right now is not running very well either. You might be able to put a phrase on the car that Cale's driving right now that used to apply to his former business interests. And that's turkey. <laughs> because Cale at one time, now I want to tell you, this man's got a sense of humor, so I want you to put your tongue in your cheek when you listen to this story about his adventures as a turkey farmer. A turkey is something that uh, you really have to stay with all the time and uh, I'll never forget one time that uh, I was in the National Guard and uh, a thunderstorm came up and I rushed home from the National Guard Armory to uh, check on my turkeys and they were just standing out in the rain looking straight up in it to see where it was coming from I guess and just dropping over dead. They were just drowning themselves and looking to see where the water was coming from and so I realized right then that these were pretty dumb things and uh, Maybe it wasn't, wasn't the way to go. I lost a lot of money in the turkey business. It took me a long time to overcome it. Then on the other hand, I think that it probably made me uh, want to be the best race driver in the, that I could possibly be because there had to be a better way of making a living than raising turkeys. <laughs> you believe that? Don't buy any land for that man. <laughs> oh, he's a dandy. Your leader is Bill Elliott. Dale Earnhardt is running in second place. Jeff Bodine, third. Rusty Wallace, four. And Terry Labonte, five. We'll be back after this commercial. And a word for our local station. Chevy Truck presenting to Winston. Total prize money of $600,000. The winner of the final segment, a 10-lapper, takes $200,000. And this ABC Sports exclusive. Being brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevy trucks, by AC Delco, stay ahead of trouble with AC Delco parts, and by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Bill Elliott continues to lead. Earnhardt dropping off the pace. Bodine farther back, followed by Wallace and Labonte. Darrell Waltrip. Figured to be one of the chargers, one of the challengers. Had a pretty good start here in the second segment, but fell off the pace dramatically. Is now running 10th. Let's see if there's a story in that as we join Dr. Jerry Punch. We're standing with Waddell Wilson, the crew chief for Darrell Waltrip, and Waddell, Darrell has been dropping back. What's the problem? Well, on that 10-minute break, we changed the right rear spring, and we changed the tires, and made it a couple other adjustments, and. And we evidently missed it. So, you know, when we get to stop the next 10 minutes, we're going to change it all back and see if we can't get it going in the right direction at that point in time. How has the track changed? Is the track getting awfully slick out there now? Well, it's not that bad. You know, normally Charlotte is, does get awful slick, but since they've repaved it, it's pretty good. It's staying basically the same. Well, Waddell Wilson has his work cut out for him in that next break. They're going to try to get Darrell Walter back in the fray here at the Winston. And of course, that's where the big bucks are, $200,000 to the winner, and that's a, that's a firewall full bore sprint. Bill Elliott now leading by 3.2 seconds over Dale Earnhardt in second place. And he certainly doesn't look like he's going to be headed. So it could well be that he's already pocketed uh, the biggest prize of the Daytona 500, which he collected a total of about $279,000. And uh, if he wins this, he picks up a bonus of uh, 50,000. So he got 25 in the first one, 50 in the second. And if he wins the third one, he puts $275,000 in his bank account. Man, they'll, they'll roll some red carpet down Main Street in Dawsonville. He comes home with that kind of thing. Buddy Baker pulled in pit road, went right straight to the garage, and the veteran is out. But Buddy has already had a pretty good day. He won 30 grand in winning the Winston Open. So Buddy is out of the race. And here's Jerry. Well, Buddy Baker just climbing out of the Crisco Oldsmobile, and they're trying to decipher what the problem is. Buddy, it wasn't a bad day for you so far, about $40,000 at least after winning the Winston Open. But what put you out of it here? Well, transmission, we just found out. I was looking. I the car never did run real good uh, in the in the last race, and it was slowing up a little bit. What I think we got is a bearing or something seizing up in transmission because it never did really run down the straightaway in that last race. But you got to feel good about taking the checkered flag here in front of the hometown fans in the qualifier earlier today. Oh yeah, we're happy. Thank you. Well, Buddy Baker out of it here in the Winston. 
from uh, 15th through 20th place. Each starter in the Winston collects 10 grand. So add that on to the 30. And Jerry's right. It's a total of 40 grand today for Buddy Baker. So that'll pay some bills for him. And he is now the owner of that racing team or part owner of the racing team. This event is more for the drivers, I think, than anybody else because they're going to get the big cash. And I'm sure there are a lot of owners who have been facing all day long with wet palms, wondering uh, how many of their expensive race cars might be uh, rattled around because everybody's looking ahead to next weekend in which the World 600 will be run here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. There's your running order of the top 10 as we close down to the end of segment two. Bill Elliott has about a four second lead over Dale Earnhardt with Bodine continuing third and he's a second or so behind Earnhardt. Now I want you to watch here and see if you can pick up. It looks like the tires are smoking a little bit on Earnhardt's car when he's running the corner, Donnie Allison. Well I noticed I noticed that the car looks like it's pushing right up there a little bit, Keith, and uh, tell me right. what pushing means. Well that means the front end not turning down in the corner like you'd like to have it. You turn the wheels to the left, but the car wants to go straight. We call that pushing. And uh, right now, Elliot's car seems to be just gliding through that portion of, that portion of the corner, and uh, that's the reason why he's driving away and leaving them. Yeah, he's, he's driving away and leaving them, all right. We told you earlier that the general feeling was of the Junior Johnson group that uh, Terry Labonte in car number 11 had an engine that would do almost anything, but there's something else missing because he at the moment is not a factor, but that powerful engine might come into play in the 10 lap finale, and Terry Labonte went into this particular event pretty optimistic. I think so, you know. Uh, it's taken us a little while to get things going, but uh, I feel like the second time around, all these racetracks, we're gonna be much better than we were the first time around. We've learned a lot, we've made a lot of mistakes, uh, and I believe we're gonna be able to apply what we've learned uh, the second time around. And uh, I'm really pleased with the way things, you know, have, have gone and the progress that we've made. And uh, it's really important for us to, to do as good as we possibly can the first time around at the racetracks because that's just going to give us that much more to improve on. So he's out there grinding it, running in the number five spot right now. We've got ten laps to go as Bill Elliott clearly has the upper hand in the Winston at the moment. Your first place in your 10 lap final worth $200,000. Second place is worth 50 and third place worth 40. A total of 600,000 being spread over this three second event. Now looking back into the crowd, trying to figure out whether or not, I guess, uh, Let's see if we can pick up where Davey Allison might be because he seems to be running awfully strong after going a lap down and having to have his gear changed and getting out late. But he has, uh, no, something else has happened. Yeah, he's, he's cooled he slowed off now, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah, he slowed down the last few laps. Uh, he's running 11th now. All right, here's Jerry Punch again with Dick Childress. Well, Richard Childress is the car owner for Dale Earnhardt, and Richard, you've been timing your driver. You're losing about a tenth of a second a lap to Bill Elliott. What can you do during this next 10-minute segment to make up that difference? Well, we'll talk to Dale and try to make some tire adjustments. I don't think a critical chassis change would do it. You know, we're real close. We just need to get the right uh, combination with tires, you know, the right stagger. If you change the stagger, do you believe you start right behind him? you believe you can run with him those last 10 laps? Well, it, you know, if we was hoping we'd get the lead this time, you know, we'd get to start up in front of Jeff in the 21 car, but, you know, we just had to see. Track position's going to mean a lot for 10 laps. Well, it should be interesting. The last 10 laps, they'll take the gloves off and go bare knuckles. 10 lap shootout coming up. There's some feeling that uh, Richard Childress, having been an experienced and good, solid race driver, having a race driver own and operate a racing team could be an advantage. How do you feel about it, Donnie? Well, really, you know, you got to look at Junior Johnson's uh, operation and everything else. Those guys have been there. They know what goes on. They know when the driver comes in and says something, that he's not thinking it up. And uh, it's a definite advantage, I think. Well, clearly, they've had a bonanza so far this year in winning six 
this being their 10th competition of the year, and they put six away to lead in money. One of the surprises so far today has been the inability of Darrell Waltrip to run with the leaders. And of course, uh, nobody, nobody has been able to run so far with Bill Elliott. We had that little spurt there in the closing moment after the yellow flag in which Bodine hung on to his tailpipe pretty well. But I don't think even in that instance with five laps to go in this one now, there was ever any real thought that Bodine was going to run him down. I don't think Bill Elliott thought it for a minute. I think that he was content in just finishing that segment and uh, uh, starting his next one. Now, now he's doing the same thing again. He's content to get this over with. And uh, then, like I said, we're going to have a 10-lap uh, dash. Yeah, but you can talk about uh, the temper of the moment. Uh, you can talk about the dogged determination. You can talk about all of those human factors you want. But if you don't have the race car to run with a guy like an Elliott, all of those other factors don't mean a dead gun thing. They sure don't. And, uh, you know, it's very, very discouraging when you're sitting out there in the car doing everything you can do, and a guy pulls away from you like that. And uh, right now, he's, he's just in a class kind of by itself. We're winding it down, heading for the 125th lap. We've run a first segment of 75 laps, now 50, and uh, who is that? Benny Parsons. Harry Gant. Harry Gant. Harry Gant has just ducked into the garage, and he's gone from the race, and that leaves 17. So three cars are gone. Neil Bonnet, Neil Bonnet and uh, Richard Petty involved in an accident in the first segment out of the race, and Harry Gant now has gone uh, into the garage, and he's out of it. Jeff Bodine, who ran strong at the start, ran close at the finish of the 75 lapper, is uh, clearly way, way out of it right now as uh, he continues to lose ground. And Elliott just seems to be on a string. Yes, you know, I noticed it. Well, really, Keith, what's happening right now is he's not straining himself. You know, he's, he's running a good, smooth race. He's holding out the problem getting in. And, uh, the other guys are really straight in. They're driving the car down the corner as hard as they can, and then they slide worse. But uh, the Elliott's car really surprises me that it is hooked up and finished in. And he's also, I think he's put Davy Allison another lap down, along with a couple of other cars, as he uh, continues to wing it around. So we've got the white flag, one lap to go for the leader, Bill Elliott. That's your checkered flag, I'm sorry. They're not using the checker and won't use the checker until the end of the 10 lap finale. They put a white flag up there indicating it's over. But uh, out of the corner of my eye, I saw the white and I thought it was one to go. So it's Elliott show so far. Earnhardt will finish in second place in the second segment. And we're gonna have a visit with Dale Earnhardt and how he's turned things around in his life, both personally and professionally. So Bill Elliott has collected $25,000 for winning the first segment, $50,000 for winning the second segment. And now as they go 10 laps for $200,000, Bill Elliott will start on the pole. You gotta say, his chances are pretty good. All right, back here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, cars being moved out onto the grid. Dale Earnhardt is going to be in row two, and he's going to be running right in behind Jeff Bodine alongside Kyle Petty. And the pace car now beginning to crank up and is going to lead the field out onto the track. How do these drivers feel about running a 10-lap shootout? Here's what they said. Yeah, so you can't... You can't use a lot of finesse. You just have to go in there and, and, you know, maybe route your way through, make your own hole. But like I say, no one knows what's going to happen. And you're going to have to be willing to get some negative press when that thing's over because if somebody's in my way, I'm going to be blowing the horn. I'm going to be trying to go to the front. It's going to be some bent up vendors. And for that kind of money, I think people figure it's going to happen. It's no holes barred and you just go and do whatever you can. If you don't start in the first two or three spots, then you're going to start right up in the middle of a hurricane. You're going to have, have some fender banging. It's going to be a knockdown drag out. Probably some of the teams are going to be needing backup cars after that last 10 laps. The most wild, outright fight you've ever seen in your life. And 
That's what's good about it because the guys that want to get in there and scrap it up, they'll have a chance to do that. I think Devil's going to come out in all of them. <laughs> you know, I look at the first two segments as qualifying races. They pay a lot of money, yes, but still they are really just qualifying races for that last 10 lap dash. That's where all the money comes out. Obviously, that pre-recorded, Neil Bonnet is out of the race, having been involved in a wreck. The front row, Bill Elliott, Jeff Bodine. Row two, Kyle Petty, Dale Earnhardt. Row three, Rusty Wallace, Tim Richmond. Row four, Terry Labonte. That big engine, remember that, Bobby Allison with him. Row five, Darrell Waldrop, Ricky Rudd. Row six, Parsons and Shepard. Row seven, Davey Allison, Cale Yarborough. And row eight, Greg Saxon, Bobby Hillen. One lap down, Davy Allison and Cale Yarborough. Three laps down, Greg Sachs and uh, Hillen. So, I think it's fair to say those four have very little chance in this finale. But it adds up to bucks because uh, through 10th place, it pays $10,900. They figure to go around a couple of times. This is the final. 10 laps, 15 miles, $200,000 goes to the winner. And I'm sitting alongside an old warrior here, Donnie Allison, who would love to be out there, wouldn't you? I sure would right now. And uh, I can almost feel it sitting right here, Keith. Uh, I know that Dale doesn't like the idea of starting on a second row outside, but uh, I'll tell you, this is going to be a whale of a 10 lap right here. Out of the race, Bonnet, Petty, Baker, Gant. Four people. 16 cars are out there, but Bill Elliott has been clearly superior with his equipment all day. He jumped to the lead in the first segment. He jumped to the lead in the second segment. He's put away 75,000 already. Pace car, if it drops off the track, green flag is waiting. There he goes, and here they come. Bodine bids for the lead, has it over the line. Elliott, however, is inside. Earnhardt may be pushing Bodine. Bodine going for the lead, tire smoke. Bodine spinning, and Earnhardt goes into the lead as Elliott bumped Shoved out of the way, Elliott is second. Earnhardt has the lead. There are at least three cars involved in that, but only one of them clearly out of it. And uh, the yellow flag has come out. They'll race to the yellow. So Earnhardt, who had a big lead of about oh, 100 yards over Bill Elliott, will lose that advantage because of the almost automatic yellow flag. So Elliott will close right in behind. Dale Earnhardt, and so for that matter, will the rest of the people. I don't think we actually lost anybody, did we? Even though it was, uh... well, now look, Bodine is flying under the yellow flag. Is he down off the racetrack? But Donnie, why would uh, Bodine's heading for the pits? Engine smoking, tires smoking, and Bodine losing, breaking loose, literally, up there in the middle of the turn. Well, I'll tell you what happened, Keith. Uh, Bodine came down a little bit too soon on Bill Elliott, and they got together. That's what started the, uh, the whole thing. And uh... Hillen, Bobby Hillen Jr. comes into the pits. Cale Yarborough comes into the pits. Obviously, Bodine is in the pits. So those three cars, apparently, were the ones affected. Elliot, miraculously, it looked like he was going to go on the wall and got away with it. Now, you see him, uh, must have been a tap there. He, he tried to slam the door on Elliot, and apparently they tapped. And you see the tire smoke billowing up. Now, watch Elliot. There's a bump again. Watch uh, Earnhardt goes down inside, and Elliot with a brilliant job of driving to keep his car off the wall. And that was a pretty good punch. Very definitely. Another look at it. Yeah, well, you see right there, you see that uh, Bodine did try to come down into the inside line, and, and Elliot was still there. Whether he saw Bill Elliott or not, I don't know, but uh, that's what caused that wreck. Earnhardt way down low on the apron, pops out of there, and let's get the latest information on Bodine's circumstances now from Dr. Jerry Punch. 
Jeff Bodine's car sitting on pit road. They're trying to get the front end set back in line. The front wheels steering mechanism has been on the car. They had to change all four tires. You see him rolling the car and putting a rolling pin beneath the left front wheel. They're trying to pull the sheet metal away. There is some red paint on the left side of Bodine's car. The red paint that came together up in turns one and two and Jeff Bodine still sitting dejectedly in that Chevrolet waiting to go back on the speedway. All right, we have the unusual circumstance now where we have not run a lap because the uh, laps run under yellow do not count. Only the green laps. We'll be back. On the restart, Dale Earnhardt goes to the corner. Clearly the leader, Bill Elliott, tucks in behind him. Bodine is back out on the racetrack, but back in the pack, toward the rear of the pack. Your leader now is Dale Earnhardt. But it's Bill Elliott in that T-Bird that's been running faster than anybody all day, and he closes right in behind. Look how close he is to Earnhardt coming down off turn number four. Eight laps we are running in now, working number eight as Earnhardt. Elliott trying to slide underneath him, and Dale and, won't buy it. And if you notice right there, Keith, there was a little bit of paint a little bit of paint change hands right there, too. Elliott now getting a challenge from Tim Richmond, but he closes again right in behind Earnhardt, coming down off turn four. And Earnhardt loses it, goes on the grass, comes back, and uh, Elliott goes inside. And Earnhardt still got the lead. Incredible piece of driving by Earnhardt. Seven laps to go. Earnhardt went on the grass down the home straight and was still able to hold on to his lead. And now Elliott gives up low and goes high. And he's loose at the turn and has to drop back. He got the wiggling around. Elliott almost went to the wall. And right now it's Terry Labonte with that big engine bidding for the lead alongside Earnhardt. Earnhardt trying to hold him off. Elliott is back in the number four position. Richmond's running third. Earnhardt trying to hold off the challenge of Labonte. Boy, you got some charges up in front now. Earnhardt clearly the leader now. Labonte is right behind him. Richmond right behind uh, Labonte. And Elliott trying to take Richmond and does for third place. Keith, you're seeing the race now, buddy. You're really seeing the race. Earnhardt holding on. Labonte's right there. So Look, Elliot lost it. Elliot Elliot almost lost off it. Of it. He almost lost it coming off two. Almost lost it coming off two. He slowed way down. Everybody goes by. Bill Elliott, he may be through for the day. It is Earnhardt and Labonte now at Richmond. And Labonte gave us a thrill a moment ago as he made that challenge on Earnhardt getting by Elliott as Earnhardt went to the grass down the home straight and hung on. Elliott going to the pits. Something happened to his car, and he just fell right out of it. I think and he's got a flat tire, Keith. He may well have. What's he got, Jerry? Tire, left rear tire on Ben Elliott is flat. The left rear tire going down. He had to come in and make this pit stop, a costly stop for Elliott. That's what happened to him coming off two, but he was involved in two or three different bumpings out there, and that may well be where the bad luck bit him. He races after picking up two tires, back into the fray, but he's a lap down as Earnhardt had crossed the start-finish line, and $200,000 waiting as we're working lap number seven. The body is right there, so is Richmond. I guess Tim Richmond now has proven he's healthy enough to come back running hard. The ability of Earnhardt to keep his car even through the middle of the turns and run perhaps a little faster through that short section than most of the other people, a distinct advantage right now. But Lordy, he had some highfalutin moments before he could nail it down, didn't he? I'm going to tell you, he did. Elliot's off the pace now. Uh, he Elliott's gone. This one he picked up 75,000 in the first two segments. Now Earnhardt 
with the white flag out. He's in the final lap, and he has the lead over Labonte. Richmond is there. Labonte and Richmond will slam it to the firewall, both of them. But then so will Dale Earnhardt. Here's the sprint down the final straightaway. On the backside of the mile and a half racetrack, Labonte looks to the inside. Nothing there. Earnhardt slams the door. Richmond's out of it. No way. He can pick it up in his position, number three. And it is Earnhardt, the body, Richmond. One, two, three. Earnhardt for $200,000. guys are that kind of a race right there will bring the nice out <laughs> yeah, it exposes it doesn't it <laughs> oh me. yes sir there was some knuckle busting in that one and actually they come out of it in reasonably good shape nobody really torn up save the bonnet petty cars and Earnhardt slides back in in front Let's go back to the first bumping circumstance here that seemed to bring this on. That's Earnhardt leading. Bill Elliott is right behind him. Now there's a bump right there. Earnhardt is knocked loose down the grass. Going on the grass might have helped him, Donnie. Yeah, well, I tell you, really, uh, Elliott had to back off because he didn't know which way Earnhardt was going to go coming out of the grass. Now comes the action right now. That put Earnhardt uh, in control, literally, of the race because later on there was another bumping over in turn two, and uh, Bill Elliott had uh, both tires go flat on the left side of the car, and uh, I think all of them are battle scarred after that 10 lap scuffle. But the big winner is Dale Earnhardt, and here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, he's getting, trying to get unhooked and get it congratulated here by the crew and telling them what a great job they did. Dale, a tremendous race. First of all, congratulations on a great win. Well, that was something else. You know, Bill uh, spun that night five car out and caused a big mess, and then he come up there and tried to spin me out twice. I didn't take it. That, uh, when you got hit in the left rear coming through the tri-oval, that's a tremendous job of driving to hang on to the car. What would you, you do to keep the car going straight? <laughs> I just held on to her. I did the best I could with it. You know, I'd like to thank Wrangler and everybody. Uh, good wrench. You know, all the guys who did a super job with kept adjusting on the car all day it was getting better toward the end but you know bill and them got into it there and spun around and we just missed them and then i'd be darned if bill didn't uh, try to knock me out twice he had me sideways uh, going off of four two over there and then turned me through the trial and i i slipped him up high just to let him know i was mad and you know, i didn't try to wreck and didn't run him in the wall or nothing and then, then he tried to wreck me after the caution there i think he's a little upset yeah, I'd say he might have been a little upset, but tempers will flare periodically. This is a 10-lap shootout. You said we're going to take the gloves off and go bare knuckles, and that's what happened. Well, I hate that happen, but the man hit me on, on after we got the checkered flag. He hit me on the back stretch. I think that's a little uh, beyond what we should have been doing. Well, possibly it might have been as Dale Earnhardt will climb out now $200,000 richer after winning the Winston. Well, Keith, indeed, there were some tempers flaring, and Bill, those last 10 laps were crazy. Everyone expected them to be, but they really were. But the thing of it is, Dale spun Jeff out down there, then he come back, and then whenever he got, I was clearly under him down there in one and two, and I was plumb down on the apron, he cut down on me, and he claimed I went up on him, and I was plumb down on the apron. You know, and he cut down on me. Then we come down the front straightaway, and I was clearly under him right here, and then he cut down on me there and nearly spun himself out, and then he let me on the outside of him down the back straightaway and run me like straight in the wall. You know, he said that the, he was trying to keep the lead, but it looked like you two guys were just uh, almost both bought it here in the trioval area. Yeah, but the thing of it is, I was clearly under him, and I had, I was going on. I cl clearly had the quickest car. You know, he was trying to cut me off every way he could. Do you think anybody could have run with you today the way the car ran the first two segments? I don't think so. I had him covered, but, you know, that's the thing about it. If we're going to let stuff like that go, we'll see what happens next week. 
What happened to the left rear tire? When did that get cut? Well, that's when he nearly run me in the wall down there, and then it started rubbing the fender, and that's when it blew out. Now, these kind of things happen in special events. The tempers go away during the week, and you get back to full point racing next weekend. These things don't carry over, do they? Well, I don't know. You know, it, it's time for this to stop. You know, the thing of it is I have been not the aggressive driver all my life. You know, I've tried to give and take with the best of the things. But when a guy cuts you off that bad and that obvious, it's time to, to take the other cheek. You know, the thing of it is you go out and you run as hard as you can all day long, and then him trying to cut you out to outrun it, that ain't the way I was brought up racing. Well, indeed, a difference in philosophy here. Bill Elliott's still upset, and rightfully so. Some contact in his last 10 laps, and he's trying to cool off here back behind the trucks. 